the S-75 Duvina was one of the high-altitude air defense systems that Western aircraft feared the most during the First Cold War. The missile, whose NATO reporting name is SA-2 Guideline, proved itself especially over Russia, Cuba, Vietnam and the Middle East. It had played important roles in almost all the critical wars and crises until the 1990s. Now, we're investigating the S-75, a legendary air defense missile system. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new video, please click the bell button. As one of the most widely deployed air defense missile systems in history, the S-75 indeed left its mark on the First Cold War. It was an indispensable element in the protection of the Eastern Bloc's airspace against the Western Air Forces, which had the better pilots and aircraft. To better understand the S-75, it would be helpful to look back at the early 1950s. In those years, the US Air Force had begun to use the B-47 and B-52 high-altitude nuclear bombers. The USSR did not have enough radars to control its vast territory. Also, the capabilities of these radars used in those years were limited. The US bombers could attack many cities and critical facilities of the USSR using these radar gaps. Besides, the USA could keep its enemy under observation continuously with its high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft. After they had scrambled, the Soviet interceptors of the time needed a long time to climb to the same altitude of US bombers and reconnaissance aircraft. During this time, the US aircraft could leave the area. The USSR had no other solution for high-altitude air defense than the obsolete 130mm KS-30 and 100mm KS-19 anti-aircraft guns. To solve this problem, the USSR developed the S-25 Byarkut missile system first, whose NATO reporting name was SA-1 Gild. This stationary system was being used only for the protection of Moscow. Needing a more mobile air defense missile system to be used in other regions, the USSR started the development of the S-75 to replace the KS-30s and KS-19s in 1953. The mission of the new missile was to shoot down the large and non-maneuverable aircraft flying at high altitude. So the maneuverability was not required, but the flying at high speed was essential. It had to be resistant against the aircraft countermeasures. The S-75 Divina entered service in 1957. It was unveiled at that year's May Day Parade in Moscow. There are many models of the V-750 missile used with the S-75 air defense system. The basic V-750 version is a two-stage missile. It has a solid fuel booster and a storable liquid fuel upper stage rocket engine. Four large crop delta-shaped wing fins of the booster have the small control surfaces in their trailing edges which control roll. There are smaller crop delta-shaped wings near the middle of the upper stage and the mini control surfaces at the far rear. Most versions of the missile also have small fins on the nose. The radio-guided missile receives the location and vector information of the target from the guidance computers at the site via one of the three radio channels. The early models of the S-75 have two sets of four small antennas in front of the forward fins. The later versions have four much larger strip antennas located between the forward and middle fins. The missile with approximate fuse has the 195 kg fragmentation warhead whose kill radius is about 65 meters at lower altitudes. The kill radius increases to 250 meters at higher altitudes. There is also a version with the nuclear warhead. Because of the low accuracy, in general use, two missiles are fired against one target. If the missile does not receive the guidance commands during the first six seconds of its cruise, it begins to perform the ballistic flight. After 60 seconds, 
If it still doesn't receive the guidance command, it destroys itself. The missile, which receives the guidance commands, has to find its target within 115 seconds. After that, the automatic self-destruction system activates. The V-750 missile, fired from the S-75 Darina model, has a length of 10.8 meters and a diameter of 650 millimeters. Its weight is about 2,390 kilograms. The effective range of the missile is 29 kilometers. Its effective altitude is 25,000 meters. The V-750 has a speed of Mach 3.5. The S-75 Disna version fires V-750 VK and V-750 VN missiles, which have the more powerful booster. The effective altitudes of these missiles are about 30,000 meters. They can reach a range of up to 34 kilometers. The S-75M Walhoff model fires the improved V-750M missiles, whose range is 43 kilometers. This missile has better low altitude capability than its predecessors. There was a ship-based version of the missile called S-75M2 Walkoff M. One of the Sverdlov class cruisers of the Soviet Navy, Zerzhensky, was equipped with this model, whose NATO reporting name is SAN2A. However, the missile was found unsuccessful for naval use. It was never applied on other Soviet surface combatants. China produced the S-75 under license under the name of HQ-1, then developed advanced models of the system called HQ-2 using the reverse engineering method. This country also produced the DF-7, a surface-to-surface -surface tactical ballistic missile model of the HQ-2s. Similarly, the Houthis in Yemen developed the Kahir-1, which is a surface-to-surface -surface model of their S-75s. The Iranian Sayyid-1 missile is an upgraded version of the HQ-2. This model has a different guidance system. The Egyptian reverse-engineered version of the S-75 is called Tayyir Sabah. Some countries, such as China, Cuba, Ethiopia, and North Korea, have developed self-propelled models of the S-75 locally. The number of countries that rely on the S-75 in protecting their airspace has exceeded 40 over time. However, today, the missile is only in the inventory of Angola, China, Cuba, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Kyrgyzstan, Mongolia, Myanmar, North Korea, Romania, Syria, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Vietnam, and Yemen. A typical S-75 regiment consists of a regimental headquarters and three missile battalions with six launchers each. The headquarters has the P-12 Yenisei early warning radar, whose NATO reporting name is Spoon Rest. It is effective in a 200 km range and an altitude of 25,000 meters. The battalion's missile launchers are positioned to form a hexagon approximately 60 to 100 meters apart from each other. The SNR-75 targeting radar is in the center of the flower-like hexagon. The original model of this radar, with a NATO reporting name Fansong, operates in the G-band and can be engaged to an air target from a range of 120 kilometers. Due to Israel's capture of an S-75 system during the 1967 Six-Day War, the USSR developed the RSNA-75M model of the radar operating in E-band. This version, with a NATO reporting name Fansong F, has a tracking range of 145 kilometers. The guidance system of an S-75 battalion allows engaging only one target at a time, yet three missiles can be fired against a single target simultaneously. The S-75 gained its first combat success by shooting down a Taiwanese RV-57D Canberra over China in 1959. However, Beijing reported that the Chinese fighters shot down this aircraft. At that time, Moscow wanted to keep the capabilities of the system secret. 
The Russian and Chinese sources claim that the S-75s also shot down some other Taiwanese RV-57s and drones over China. The S-75 gained international fame when it shot down a U-2 piloted by Francis Gary Powers on May 1, 1960 over the USSR. Two years later, during the Cuban crisis, another U-2 piloted by Rudolf Anderson also fell victim to this missile. With the Vietnam War, the US pilots once again faced the deadly S-75. On July 24, 1965, the system managed to shoot down an F-4C of the US Air Force for the first time and damaged three others. In the same year, the US Navy aircraft began to carry the AGM-45 Shrike anti-radar missiles against the S-75s. The US Air Force fitted its aircraft with powerful jammers. Later, the suppression of enemy air defenses doctrine, which brought these two solutions together, emerged. The modified aircraft, identified as the Wild Weasel, were tasked with hunting the S-75 batteries down. The S-75 did not have a high kill rate. During the 1972 Linebacker 2 campaign, the 266 V-750 missiles fired by the Vietnamese, shot down 15 B-52s and damaged other 5. Perhaps this success rate was low, but it still caused an important demoralization in the USA, which is sensitive to human and material loss. Although the US sources provide different data, the Vietnamese sources claim that the S-75s managed to shoot down 1,046 US aircraft during the war. This air defense system was also used extensively in wars in the Middle East. The S-75's first combat experience in this region was not satisfactory. In the 1967 Six-Day War, the Israeli combat aircraft flying at low altitude easily dealt with them. Israel even captured some Egyptian S-75 batteries intact in the Sinai Peninsula. Yet, the Egyptian sources claim that the S-75s along with the S-125s, managed to shoot down at least three Israeli F-4s, a Magister, an A-4, and a C-97 during the War of Attrition. However, the S-75 had its real impact in the 1973 Yom Kippur War. The Israeli Air Force had been ineffective on the Sinai front until General Ariel Sharon crossed the Suez Canal and destroyed the Egyptian air defense batteries. In the 1982 Lebanon War, Israel successfully destroyed the Syrian air defense systems with an innovative approach. Still, an Israeli A-4 was shot down by a surface-to-air missile. This success probably belonged to the S-75. During the Iran-Iraq War, the Iraqi S-75s shot down at least four F-4s and an F-5E of the Islamic Republic of Iran Air Force. This air defense system proved itself as a deadly threat even in the 1991 Gulf War. During the war, the Iraqi S-75s managed to shoot down an F-14, an F-15E, and a tornado. If we take a look at the later combat achievements of the missile, we have to mention that a Georgian S-75 battery shot down a Russian Su-27 in 1993. Many sources refer to this as the S-75's final combat success. However, this information is controversial. On February 14, 2020, a tornado of the Royal Saudi Air Force was shot down by a two-stage surface-to-air missile, probably a V-750. We have to add that in the 1992-1995 Bosnian War, the Serb forces fired at least three S-75 in the ground-to-ground -ground mode. In the recent Yemeni civil war, the Houthis are also using the modified version of this air defense system, the Kahir-1, as the ballistic missile. Since the late 1950s, the S-75 has made a name for itself in many wars and crises. This system, which is over 60 years old, naturally lost its effectiveness over the years. But it is unwise to underrate it as we saw in Yemen. Although it is becoming obsolete,
the saga of the legendary S75 has not yet ended. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new video, please click the bell button.